Hello and welcome. So today's something a bit different. It's uh, establishing a wildflower meadow, but we're, we're not going to use the traditional method at all. So I've been cutting this grass all year and I've been thinking about having a little wildflower patch and then all of a sudden all this white clover started flowering and it was full of bees. It was just too beautiful to get rid of. So what we're going to do is uh, something that I've done in a few other places I've worked before and we're just going to grow a, a selection of different wildflowers as plug plants and we're going to plant them in here. Now it's not going to be like a traditional wildflower where you've stripped away the topsoil, you've run down the nutrition, but it's going to give us what we're looking for which is a bit of height and structure to do our bug hunts which is a very important activity for us and the kids and it's going to give us a few more flowers for pollinators at the same time and provide that habitat. So for us, as long as they're single flowers and they're native preferably, but not even necessarily native, it's allowed to go in here. So we're going to do it as a couple of series and we're going to establish that wildflower through this area. So it's July now and the first step we're going to take is we're going to sow a couple of different types of plants into these plugs or into trays to be transplanted directly into here. In the meantime, we're just going to leave the white clover into flower and we may come in and cut it again short so it's short enough for us to do the plug planting later on. So without further ado, let's get on with the seed sowing. Right, so we're on to the sowing. So what you sow in will depend on how you want to plant it and what you're planting. So the, the first phase of this wildflower is quite simple. It's uh, just going to be a couple of perennials, red clover and oxide daisy and I'm going to try and get some yellow rattle established. Yellow rattle is obviously quite important for wildflowers long term because it helps keep the grasses down a little bit because it parasitizes on their roots and that means you're going to have more gaps in the sward which is going to allow the wildflowers themselves a couple of bare patches to seed into every year. So one thing I like to do with the perennials is to start them off in these really deep trays and the beauty of these is I can just grow these in here and I don't have to do anything until next spring. So I usually do a few of these as backups and then I have, then I'm definitely sure next year I'm going to have something in flower, in that wildflower. So this is the Oxide Daisy. It's very much a surface scatterer. So I just put a couple of seeds in each one. So there's, a, you know, three to five. Some of them have quite a lot more because I wasn't that careful, but that's fine. And we're just going to go through and we're just going to press it down. It doesn't matter if the light's exposed to the seed. It's not going to affect oxide daisy at all. It's still going to germinate just fine. And that's really that. We just leave these. They'll germinate. We've got them for next spring. Now, <clears throat> the process is exactly the same for red clover. They don't need to be sown deeply either. So I'll skip that. So if we're going to do some oxide daisies in the trays. And to make our job a bit easier. So the, these aren't going to have long. When they germinate and once they're past their seedling stage, these are going to need to get planted out. And what I'm doing is I'm just... Just sewing them into clumps. Rather than just scattering over the entire surface. And what that's going to do is it's going to make them a lot easier to thin out and separate and replant as clumps. Because I'm not going to be planting these as individuals. Amazing how clumpy this peat-free compost is. So as you can see, they're all in clumps. You get the idea, and it's exactly the same for the red clover. Just press, press that in. You can give it a really light covering if you want. Yeah, 
that's them done. Now with the yellow rattle, I bought some seed. And I know we said provenance isn't that important for the wildflower, but it is good to get some local yellow rattle if you can. So I bought this, cheap as chips, nothing special. And I haven't always had very good, ex very good results doing it this way. Whereas collecting it fresh myself, I have. Now really fortunately, I found some the other day. So I'm gonna sew the stuff I bought here and label it, the stuff I bought. And I'm also gonna sew the yellow rattle I collected. And as you can see, there's nothing special about that. I want to make sure the seeds are covered with the yellow rattle a little bit. So that's the bought yellow rattle. And this is the stuff I collected. As you can see, I just make the lines like that just to help get the seeds in a little bit deeper. There you go, it's a bit of a mess, but there is some ripe seed in amongst all this. So these are the ripe, ripe seed pods. You can hear why they get the name Yellow Rattle. You can hear the nice seeds bouncing around in there. So we're just gonna Extract them out of the pod. Because it's these seeds that we're after. So we're going to sow them. So that's the collected yellow rattle seed. So we'll label that up. We'll cover them up again it wasn't all perfectly ripe but even just a few of these germinating it's going to be really good really good for our wildflower and uh, they were a bit of a rescue job because they were they were the area was getting cleared anyway so that's why I've just got a handful of all sorts I just saw the seed pods grab the opportunity so there we have it we've got red clover oxide daisy and yellow rattle and i'll probably chuck a few annuals in some corn flowers some calendula like i say it doesn't have to all be native and it just has to have single flowers and provide the structure that we're after so thank you very much for watching hope that inspired some of you to go out and do a little patch of wildflower if you've got the space and see that it's not all it's not all as complicated as it might always seem depending on what you want from your wildflower so we'll catch you at the next one